Nails. 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 And more nails. Straight up. If your main tool is a punch and a hammer when denailing wood from a deconstructed structure, <laughs> that's tough to say. Then I'll tell you what, it's about hour 20. Hmm, there must be a better way. Well, there is. It's called the Air Denailer. It's a specialty tool and it's used to specifically make this job five times faster. Like, no doubt about it, everything about deconstructed building is labor intensive. Manual. Right? It's like, Manuel. Dear Manuel. I'm super excited to share this video with you. It's one that's kind of been in the woodworks for a little while. <laughs> Dealing with all these nails, it's a time-consuming, labor-intensive process. There's no two ways about that. That's why I'm so happy to share this tool with you because it's a, it's a savings, it's a time hack, is what it is. I'll be discussing three different brands at three different levels of quality with Amazon links in the description should you want to learn more. What is an air denailer and how does it work? Very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is reach right over there and hit the subscribe button. <laughs> okay, got ya. But, you know, go ahead. <laughs> the function of this tool, it's simple. You pull the trigger, the pin shoots out, three quarters of an inch, striking the nail. The nail is forced out of the wood. Brilliant. The tool works under air pressure, much like an air nailer, yet, well, kinda of works in the opposite direction. The general recommended range of air pressure for these units is somewhere around that 100 PSI, 80 to 100, 110. Those are the guidelines that I was getting out of the instruction manuals. I think personally it depends on the gun, but we'll get into that a little bit later. If you have your pressure set too high, this little guy, you might just blow them right apart, right? And then if you don't have enough air pressure going through these, nothing functions quite correctly and that can lead to pin sticking and well, you can start wrecking stuff at that point. Primarily, this tool is used to take nails out of wood. It can also be used to drive nails deeper into the wood. Might be handy if you're working with a beam. It can also punch holes in tin, which could also be handy. They all come with oil, all right? And that's probably the most important part about these things. Uh, every time that you're gonna use this, before using it, drop a couple drops. In here, it keeps everything lubricated. It also disperses the water. Let's say that you blasted through with water and you didn't realize it and you stored it. It's gonna come out rusty, right? So that's why we oil it. And you should do that every time. And if you're using it for a prolonged amount of time, I definitely recommend just giving it a couple shots, you know, maybe throughout the day. If you got too much oil, what's gonna happen? You're gonna know it uh, because of the vent here it will shoot the excess oil out. This one here, it's got a dial on it so you can change where you're directing the flow, which is like super nice. And they also put a convenient stop plate there because that oil would shoot down all over your hand. This one here, it's straight out the top no matter what. And also keep it clean. I think that probably bar none is the best way to keep your tool usable for the long haul. For myself, it's kind of an unwritten rule that these guns get cleaned after every building. Why? Because they're generally out either at the building or they're, they're somewhere dusty. They get set down, 100 years of dust is flowing through the air, and definitely it goes into these things. When they do start getting dirty, that's when your pin will start sticking uh, and things won't quite work right. I'm not going to take apart these tools today and show you the insides and how they work. It's not complicated to clean these, but it is a process and we just don't have time for that today. <laughs> That's just kind of a little bit about these air denailers. What are they? How do they work? And a little bit about the care and maintenance of them. Now let's talk about them. The air locker, this is the smaller of the gun. This would work really well if uh, taking apart pallets, uh, those nails are a little bit smaller gauge, right? The thing is, on the end of them, you want to be able to fit the nail inside, right? That's key. Because if you can't fit the nail inside, then the gun's not meant to take that nail out. What's going to happen? 
Well, we've done it, not knowing originally, and what happens is you blast out the side of this gun. Especially this little guy, because this is just, this is like an uh, aluminum almost, versus the, the next gun, uh, the other two, which have a metal shank, where the nail, where the nail slips in, right? This is all metal. And I'll explain why it's handy to have one metal, especially for bigger nails. A couple more things to say about this one. You can adjust the trigger. You can do it on all of them. I don't really see any need for it. Something to keep in mind is it doesn't come with the air fitting, so you gotta go and search one out. It should come with it. So that's the gun. It's very reasonable price. The body feels good. Like it, it's fairly strong. Like you can bang this around a little bit. Just the weak point is here. But if you're taking apart pallets, this is ideal. Okay, so the air locker is a good gun, but it's not an, a do-all type gun. Middle of the range, that's where we were for a very long time, and I love it. The, the really good part about this is, like I was saying, the metal here. Why? Because you can take a board like this, right? And you can fold it over so it's straight. That's why the metal on here is important, and it will take it. That's what it's made for. A grip on, it's nice. It's well built. All these are well built really. Like they work fantastic, but some have a little more power than others. Here you can easily run this down to 40 psi. Uh, 40 psi I found it doesn't like rifle it through. You'd never be able to, sh to fire the big nails through. You have to use like 100 psi for these. But for the small ones, like in siding, you can bump that down to 40 and this thing works pretty good at 40. It works good at 82. The actual nail kicker. Uh, this one here is like the Cadillac. Do you need it? I don't know. It's hard to say. The reason why this one's so attractive is because it's well built. It has, it comes with extra pins, right? You can switch this pin out inside here and you're down to a smaller gauge nail, just like you were with this one here, same thing. And you can work through all different sizes. So there's, this one comes with four pins. Uh, you can, I think you can get two pins or four pins. So it comes with all of them. It comes with super great instructions. Uh, the best instructions actually, like this company cares. These ones over here, uh, all the other ones that I found anyways, and I purchased other ones, you're gonna get a manufacturing sheet of paper and it'll have Chinese on it, which is fine if you can read Chinese. So you're kinda on your own there, figuring those out. These ones here are North American built, uh, American built, and yeah, this gun's gonna last. It's quite a bit heavier. That's the only downside to this gun that I found is that it's heavy. And when you're holding this gun out, you know, like this all day trying to bang nails out. Like you're feeling it in here. That's why if you can get away using the lighter one, sometimes it's nicer. Let him back seat in my car. Thank you. You're welcome. I tell you what, these guns are a huge time saver. It's easier to get your hands on these. The trick is to keep them clean, and if you want to learn that, you're going to want to check this video next.